Usman got what he wanted. He sure did. We're all talking about the war in Gaza. Not that he was being pro-Palestine, it was about all humanity. Bullshit! Who would have thought eight words across two shoes would generate this much of a reaction? I know who thought it would cause this much reaction. Usman, he doesn't even need to wear them at the game now. It's job done. Well played, sir. The messages on his white spikes are, on the face of it, far from controversial. All lives matter and freedom is a human right. It's hard to argue against that. Unless the writer and wearer is a practising Muslim and the shoes are being worn when this is happening. Then it becomes very controversial, especially in a conservative, waspy sport like cricket. The International Cricket Council doesn't allow personal messages of any sort on clothing worn during official games. The ICC have told me that I can't wear my shoes on field because they believe it's a political statement under their guidelines. The ICC is no outlier. Most professional sports have the same rules in place banning political statements. Unless it's a statement in support of LGBTQI rights or Indigenous inclusion, in which case you will either be sanctioned or shamed for not being part of the political movement. You don't think he should do it? As I said, I don't reckon he needs to. He's accomplished what he wants, but for the record, I don't think he should wear them on day one of the test. The language is ostensibly benign. Human life to me is equal. One Jewish life is equal to one Muslim life, is equal to one Hindu life, and so on. What about the Christians? Do you know what he means? It's understandably being taken as pro-Palestine, and he risks being accused of inciting the crowd. Not that Australian cricket fans are known for their passionate views on international causes. It's a big problem for Cricket Australia if he does. I think they're match fit for controversy. But yeah, it's a headache for CA. If they let him wear the shoes, it's a clear-cut case of double standards. Punters will be stopped at the gate at Optus Stadium if they're sporting an Israeli or Palestinian flag or probably even a T-shirt. But Usman can make a statement with impunity. And if they stop him... Or he refuses to play, it's an even bigger headache. That's why we discourage political statements about wars in foreign lands. Unless the war involves Russia, in which case you can fill your boots. Nobody finds that objectionable. Always in the eyes of the beholder. The issue of what is or isn't objectionable is about to be played out two kilometres west of Optus Stadium, here. Troy McCandy is going to test the endurance of the long-held legal principle of double jeopardy, which many people know about not because of their acute knowledge of the law, but because it was the title of a film in the 90s which starred Ashley Judd. Well, double jeopardy provides that no person may be tried for the same crime twice. You got that? Police have recharged McCanty with crimes he has already faced court over. What's the charge? It's the kind you'd expect police to levy against a 30-year veteran of the underworld who is regularly connected to the top tiers of Australian organised crime. Drugs? No. Guns? No, not drugs, guns, not extortion, not money laundering. Eating a meal? A succulent Chinese meal. No, but that clip will never get old. (laughs) McCanty's accused of breaching the Classifications, Publications, Films and Computer Games Enforcement Act 1996. Legislation which was introduced three decades ago to stop people watching spicy porn. You're the weird one, man. Don't make me feel weird because I like porn. You're the weird one for not liking porn. I'm normal as shit. And kids playing Doom (laughs) is being used against WA's most enduring organised crime target. Police say he used his mobile phone to download objectionable material at least five times between July 21 and January 2023 while he was in Port Kennedy. Any idea what he was looking at? We don't know for sure, but I believe it was some stuff that normal people like you and me would consider to be seriously violent shit. But we're not career bikies like McCanty. When you've been bashed, stabbed, blown up and shot at, your sense of what's objectionable deviates from the norm, shall we say. You have not seen what I have seen. The issue is going to be less about what was on his phone and more about whether the cops were legally able to charge him because he's already beaten the rap. To all the mothers out there, have a Merry Christmas and tell your sons, go and join the rebels. That was him outside court last month after police dropped pretty much the same charges. We don't know the exact details of what police are doing, but we understand the cops have tweaked the summons so it's now not about obtaining objectionable material. It's about possessing that material. Oh, a thin argument. Well, we know what his lawyer Paul Holmes will be watching between now and January 5 when he's back in court. So what are you now, a lawyer? Once upon a time. I'm Ed Harvey. For more Up Late, click the subscribe button below.